This video discusses valuing the project by a method called adjusted present value. Now, adjusted present value accounts for the tax shelter of debt differently from weighted average cost of capital. In weighted average cost of capital, the value of the tax shelter is in the discount rate. Here, we value the cash flows independent of financing and compute what's called the unlevered present value, and we separately value the tax shield associated with the project's debt. In order to do that, we have to estimate what's called the unlevered weighted average cost of capital. It's just the weighted average cost of capital without the tax shelters built in. Then separately, we have to ask ourselves, how much interest do we pay each period? How much do we get to write off on our taxes because of that? And what's that worth today? That's the value of the debt-based tax shelter today. If we add these two together, we'll have the overall value of the project. Now, the advantages of adjusted present value are that they, it is not as sensitive to the percentages of the firm financed with debt and equity as weighted average cost of capital is. Further, you can add other terms, like the value of po per pollution reduction, or the value of social welfare, or the value of tax breaks for creating new jobs to the adjusted present value calculation without changing anything else. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at that here. The unlevered, or weighted average cost of capital without leverage, is just the weighted average cost of capital. The only difference is there's no tax shelter effect in here. And the reason for that is we'll account for that as a separate set of cash flows. We should not account for it both as a cash flow and a discount rate. Then what we do is we discount at the unlevered cost of borrowing for the firm. And get the unlevered present value and net present value. Okay. And then we separately value the tax yield. The nice thing about this is as the debt and equity vary, the unlevered cost of borrowing should not vary, but the value of the tax shield will. We can account for that directly in the adjusted present value calculations. And again, we can add present values of other things here just as easily as the present value of the tax shield. So how do we do that? First of all, we're going to get the unlevered cost of borrowing. Remember that 25% of the firm is financed with debt at a cost of 5.5%. And 75% is financed with equity at a cost of 14.9%. So let's figure out what that is. 25% of the firm is financed with debt, plus, in parentheses, 75% of the firm is financed with equity, 12.55. Then turn that into a percentage and store it for right now. So the unlevered net present value of the project is the value of each one of the cash flows discounted at the unlevered cost of borrowing. 5100 discounted once, 7200 discounted twice, three times, and four times, 2700 discounted five times minus cost a day equals 4747. Now how would you do that in your calculator? Well, I already have the cash flows in here from the work we did last time. All that really changes is a new discount rate. 12.55% 
new net present value of 4747. So that's the value of the project as if there were no tax shelter or as if it were entirely equity financed. Then we need to compute the value of the tax shelter. Well, every year I have some amount of debt. The next year I owe interest on that debt at 5.5%. That gives me a tax write-off equal to the interest payment, which is the interest rate times the level of debt. So what I'll do is I'll just keep adjusting the level of debt according to the value of the remaining cash flows, the value of the assets, and the target debt ratio, 25%. Well, I showed how to do that in the last video. And what we got was debt capacity of 5381, 4752, 3523, 2145, and 603. So now what happens is each one of these times interest is the interest on the debt. The tax shelter times 0.4. So let's work that out. So I'm going to work from right to left here. Recall that the value of the company times the debt ratio in period 4 is a level of debt in period 4, the 603. Interest that we owe in period 5 at 5.5 percent is 33. Tax rate gives me 13.25. The value of the company in period 3 times the debt ratio, 25, is debt in period 3 is 21.45 times interest. So interest in period 4 is 118 times the tax rate is the tax write-off, 47.19. The value of the company in period 2 times the debt ratio gives me the amount of debt in period 2, 35.23 times interest gives me the interest payment in period 3, 194. Tax rate times 0.4 gives me the value of the tax shelter in period 3, 77. The value of the company in period 1 times the debt ratio, 47.52 times interest gives me the interest payment in period 2, 261 times the tax rate, 0.4, gives me the tax shelter in period 2. And you guessed it, the value of the company in period 0 times the debt ratio gives me the amount of debt that I start with, 53.81. Interest gives me the interest payment of 295, 96 rounding. Tax rate gives me the tax shelter of 118 in period 1. So now what I'll do, given that these are the costs, I'm sorry, the benefits of issuing debt, I'll discount each one of those back to today. The question will be, what discount rate should I use? Well, we argue that the cash flows to debt will vary with the value of the company because I'm going to keep adjusting the amount of debt to match up the value of the company. So the riskiness of this tax shelter to the owners of the company depends upon how debt varies with the value of the firm. Well, that's same, the, correlated with the economy in the same way that the entire firm is correlated with the economy. So the discount rate I should use on this is exactly the same, 12.55%. So what I'm going to do to value these things is, e is take each one of the cash flows, rounding and discounted at the same discount rate.
Well, what will I use to do that? Well, I'll use the cash flow functions. So I'll go to cash flows. I'm going to clear out my work. The first tax shelter is in year one, 118. Year two, 105. Year three, 77. Year four, 47. Year five, 13. Get the net present value based on a 12.55% interest rate Compute 279. Well, now I have the value of the company without the tax shield, and I have the value of the company with the tax shield, or I have the value of the tax shield. So now what I'll do is just get the value of the company overall. It's actually going to give me exactly the same number. What was the value of the company's tax shield? 279. What was the value of the company independent of the tax shield? 4747. Equals 5026. It's exactly the same as the value of the company under the weighted average cost of capital. The difference is this highlights what the true value of the company is versus the value of the tax shield from debt. It's robust to changes in the debt to equity ratio. It takes a little more calculation to do, but you can get it. And I can value additional benefits in the same manner as adjusted present value.